is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 subaru outback courtesy of apple subaru in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because there is one major change for the 2022 Outback. We actually do have it here today, and I'll go over that in a second. But of course, you got the best all wheel drive system in existence, really, with any Subaru as well. So, if you live in a colder climate like I do here in Pennsylvania and it snows out, this is the one you're going to want to be at. And so, in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering wheel, ride quality, exhaust clip, sound system, all of that fun stuff. So, having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so let me first start by saying there are eight different trim levels for the new 2022 Outback, which is the very most I've ever seen, I believe. But anyways, and so having said that, I don't feel like rambling off all of those prices, so therefore I'm just gonna put them all on the screen right now. Feel free to pause it if you wanted to take a closer look. But did wanna mention that that one major change is going to be the wilderness trim level. And that actually is the one we have today. And so I will of course be going over everything about this one. But nonetheless, there are two different engine configurations belonging to all of those trim levels. First one is going to belong to the non-XT trim levels and the non-wilderness trim level as well, being a 2.5 liter direct injected horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine, putting out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 176 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM, power of course sent to all four wheels through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system, power sent to the ground through a linear Tronic CVT, zero to 60 time for this one, approximately 8.7 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 33 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is the other engine configuration belonging to the XT trim levels and our wilderness trim level that we have today. This one is going to be a 2.4 liter turbocharged, horizontally opposed four cylinder boxer engine, 260 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 277 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM. Power sent to all four wheels, once again through a linear Tronic CVT with paddle shifters which we will test out in a little bit here. Zero to 60 time on this one. Get this, you guys, 5.9 seconds. That's kind of impressive on paper. We, of course, will be testing that out in a little bit here, but MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 30 on the highway for the XT trims, but that wilderness is actually gonna go down to 22 in the city, 26 then on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel though once again, which is a good thing. But anyways, before we do that acceleration test or the paddle shifter test, I did wanna mention X mode, which is a cool little off-road driving mode setup that Subaru does. It essentially increases all-wheel drive system engagement and it also uses enhanced control of the VDC system to help reduce individual wheel spin, let's say if you're going off-road. So that is a pretty cool little setup there. Did wanna also mention though, in addition to that, the Onyx ST model is going to add to that X mode, a snow and dirt mode and deep snow and mud mode. And then the wilderness is going to add in addition to that, low to medium to high speed functions to that then as well so it keeps getting better right but anyways now having mentioned all that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away and let's put the paddle shifters here to the test by the way there is a manual shift mode to use that you simply just slide the shifter to the back and to the left that is going to display what simulated gear that we are in up on the gauge display there and i say simulated because we have a cvt of course so anyways having said all that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find that straight away let's put the paddle shifters here to the test and Let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, you guys, here we go. Whoa. Nice. All right, couple things with that. First off, paddle shifters definitely react very quickly. They're instantaneous, which is a good thing. Kind of surprised me because, again, this is a CVT, and that's the second part. Didn't feel like a CVT there. This actually simulated an automatic transmission quite nicely, which is a good thing because typically with CVTs, it's kind of this rubber band kind of style transmission and it's kind of emotionless, but I gotta be honest, when you're using the paddle shifters, it simulates an automatic very, very nicely. So if that was something that you're into and the CVT bothers you, the paddle shifters are definitely a good way to go because that actually surprised me. A lot of times CVTs aren't that good in simulating automatics like this one just did there for me. So well done, Subaru. But anyways, let's now get back full control to the Outback. I'm just gonna slide the shifter back to the right. Therefore, the Outback now is full control again. And let's go ahead and find yet another straightaway. Let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, you guys, kind of an uphill climb here, but three, two, one. Nice. 
It feels quick, it feels dang quick. Definitely not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway. Definitely surprised me. This is a kind of a SUV, so to speak. So really you don't expect that quick of an acceleration in vehicles like this, but even with the CVT, it felt good. Like this is a dang good acceleration for the Outback without a doubt. I like this engine configuration that we have here today. So well done yet again. So anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.8 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 130 feet. As far as the braking feel goes, it's not bad, a little bit on the softer side, but it's definitely not a bad thing for a vehicle like this. It's pretty much as expected, so braking feel is perfectly fine. And touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension with lower L-arm. In the back, double wishbone type rear suspension, of course, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, I kind of wondered at first because we got a race suspension, we got larger all-terrain tires, which I'll go over all that in a little bit here, but having said that, I didn't expect the ride quality that we have here today. This almost rides like a luxury vehicle, believe it or not, even with all of that. So well done Subaru. The ride quality is kind of brilliant for what this vehicle is, to be quite honest. Definitely sucking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections very nicely here in the Outback. So well done. Steering feel is pretty much on par for the course. It's weighted a little bit on the heavier side. Definitely not loosey-goosey like you tend to get with some SUVs. So I do appreciate that for sure. As far as cabin noise goes, yet again, very serene cabin. Subaru did a very good job with isolating a lot of the exterior wind noise and even the road noises as well and again with the larger tires it didn't expect that so overall as far as driving dynamics go in general Subaru did a very very good job with this one I gotta give it to them and as far as visibility goes I can see perfectly fine out the back so 100% not gonna have any issues there either but that about rounds up the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Subaru Outback all right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Subaru Outback finished in ice silver metallic. In case anybody was curious of our exterior color name here, let me go ahead and start with ground clearance because we have a heck of a lot of it here in our wilderness trim, and it is going to differ amongst the trim levels. So for every other trim level but the wilderness, you're actually going to get 8.7 inches of ground clearance, but with this particular trim that we have today, that bumps it up to 9.5 inches. So definitely a good bit up there if you were planning on doing some off-roading. And there's more to that, of course, as far as the off-roading goes, and I'll touch on that as we go on. But let's go ahead and start up front of this one. The LED steering responsive headlights are going to come standard across the board meaning when you're going around a bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so that is definitely a big perk and something you do not find standard with other manufacturers out there so i love that automatic feature also coming with that meaning when it starts to get dark and at night those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there and also when you turn the windshield wipers on again the headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there again another feature usually doesn't come standard on other manufacturers so that's pretty cool led fog lights are going to come on all trim levels and they're actually going to be a hexagonal style if you were to go with the wilderness you guys can see that down below there on the bottom portion of the front bumper and since i keep touching on it as far as that wilderness trim level is going to add also a front skid plate down below redesigned front and rear bumpers for improved approach and departure angles copper accents throughout not only on the exterior but the interior as well you got some wilderness badging found on both the front doors that is a pretty cool little accent there anti-glare hood design you guys can see the matte black on the center portion of the hood there and front and rear tow points then as well so a pretty good amount and i'll get to the wheel and tires you do have that it's going to be a little bit different with the wilderness too but speaking of let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the outback all right so now since we are around to the side raised roof rails will come standard on every single trim level across the board slightly different design of course to the wilderness trim that we have today rear privacy glass coming with the premium trim level and up chrome window surrounds coming standard with the exception of the wilderness that is going to give you black window surrounds of course Outback lettering found on the side skirts. I've always liked that touch. It will be silver unless you go with the wilderness and then you're going to get the copper tone to it. As far as the side mirrors go, they are black folding side mirrors with the base. Then the premium trim level and up is going to give you body colored side mirrors with integrated turd signals with the exception 
of the onyx which is going to give you a black silica finish to the side mirrors the touring is going to give you satin chrome and the wilderness once again is going to give you a black finish so it's going to be a little bit different again amongst the trim levels there but chrome inserts found in the door handles can be found with the touring trim level only otherwise they're going to be body colored and taking a look down at the wheel setup again differing slightly amongst the trims 17 by 7 inch aluminum alloys for the base premium and wilderness trims and the wilderness trim is also going to add in addition to that all-terrain tires which you guys can clearly see right here for some off-roading and actually a full-size spare as well it's the only trim that's going to give you a full-size spare as opposed to your traditional spare i guess you could say then also all other trims are going to give you 18 by 7 inch aluminum alloys down there below but that about rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around back of this one matte black shark fin antenna found all the way to the top just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper led tail lights coming standard on this one and just below it all we do have dual exhaust outlets tucked away so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around back of the outback when it comes to opening that rear tailgate there is a hands-free power tailgate coming with a limited trim level and up and it is going to be optional on the premium but there are a few different ways to go ahead and open that of course it is hands-free like i said there is a button on the key fob itself there is a button on the tailgate itself and there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 32.5 cubic feet if that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up substantially to 75.7 cubic feet. It's actually a decent amount, if I'm being honest, for, for the Outback. I will say that. Cargo cover back there coming with the premium trim level and up. There are grocery bag hooks back there, tie-down anchors, and a little bit of in-floor storage. Not much, but a little bit of in-floor storage. Also a removable cargo tray area and some cargo lighting back there as well and again the full size spare at least on our wilderness trim level back there but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 39.5 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the rear seats there plenty of space for me rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard rear ventilation also standard front seat bat mac pockets of course coming standard heated rear seats actually coming with the limited trim level and up so we do have that here i love that especially being here in pennsylvania it does get quite cold so that is definitely a big selling feature for us here in Pennsylvania at least but dual rear USB charging ports coming with the premium trim level and up you don't always get that in SUVs believe it or not so I do love that it's on our Outback here today so pretty much everything you could possibly want back in the rear seats there but then making our way to the front seats manual adjustable cloth seating coming with the base power front seats coming with the premium trim level and up heated front seats coming with the premium trim level and up as well if you want a ventilated front seats go with one of the touring trim levels soft tech seating is going to come with the onyx and the wilderness so that is currently what we have here today and did want to mention in addition to that we do have some subaru wilderness badging found in the headrest of our outback i thought that was pretty darn cool leather seating coming with the limited then and napa leather seating coming with the touring trim levels and actually overall when it comes to seat comfort it's been perfectly fine for me here today so no issues there and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped if you were to go with the premium trim level and up and it will come heated if you were to go with the touring trims or the limited xt that's how you're going to get that heated steering wheel but did want to also mention you got the copper accents towards the bottom portion only if you go with the wilderness trims otherwise you're not going to get that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key all of your buttons located on one side of the key lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch by the way the unlock button is going to be the subaru logo in the middle there in case anybody was curious but essentially it is all keyless entry with the push button start if you go with the limited trim level and up it is going to be optional then for the premium so therefore all i'm going to do here simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee then and so but then once started up those gauges will do a full sweep tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer on your right and then there is a digital display front and center giving you information like your outside temperature average mpgs in any given time 
small digital speedometer located front and center as well and your chirp a chirp base so pretty much everything you could possibly want within the gauges there then taking a look at overall interior quality power moonroof is going to come with the touring trim levels the limited xt and optional on the other trim levels with the exception of the base i should say overhead sunglass holder coming standard across the board home link controls for the limited trim level and up and that's going to be for up to three different garage doors located just below the rear view mirror there which also has a compass by the way that is pretty darn cool Cool. automatic climate control coming with the base outback dual zone climate control coming with the premium trim level and up overall as far as interior quality goes it is dang good if i'm being honest there is this cool texturized finish which i absolutely love located right around the door handle here you usually never get that it's usually a boring black plastic so i love how they texturize that it's so cool a lot of soft touch material there is this really cool tag that says subaru wilderness found on the doors as well they didn't have to put that there but i love the little accent there i find that dang cool just like to put the subaru wilderness in the headrest portion of the seating too a lot of copper accent stitching just above the passenger side glove box you got a little bit of rubberized storage so things don't slide around as well as that cool texturized finish that you found on the doors located kind of surrounding that that is pretty darn cool just in front of the shifter you have a wireless phone charger two usb charging ports auxiliary port and electromechanical parking all of that is very nice just behind the shifter you have some nice soft touch material with some black stitching that is very nice dual cup holders very beefy cup holders i will say for extra large drinks it looks like and within the center armrest a decent amount of storage with the 12 volt power outlet but overall what i gotta say with the outback is the finishes are really really good well it's a lot of times manufacturers have the option to skimp on some of the finishes and they just leave it black or gray plastic Subaru didn't do that here with the Outback, and I love that. Not only that, they thought of the extra things as well, especially with the wilderness trim, like the little tags here on the doors. I absolutely love that. And all the copper accents, of course, to go along with that. So overall, interior quality is absolutely 100% on point here in the Outback. But then, let's make our way to the tech because it keeps getting better. 7-inch color touchscreen display coming with the base. 11.6-inch color touchscreen display coming with the premium trim level and up. And I will say for that reason alone, I would recommend the premium trim level and up because this 11.6-inch screen is pretty darn cool. And actually, this is where you're going to access X mode in case I haven't said that already. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So if you have a smartphone, just hook it up to the Outback back you have free navigation displayed up on that large screen so that is pretty darn cool factory navigation system if you wanted it coming with the touring trims and also the limited xt as well and pretty much this is basically everything you could possibly want up on this infotainment screen including the climate control settings found at the bottom portion of that if you wanted to you actually have some car information up here as well like what current angle the car is facing so if you're going up a mountain it's going to tell you what that incline angle is going to be that is pretty darn cool i love that and like i said you can check out your x mode information actually let me show you guys that real quick you just hit the little car button up there but then within x mode you can choose that snow dirt normal or deep snow and mud so that is pretty cool i like that that is up there you do have the option to turn on or off that auto start stop system so i know that annoys some people not everybody but if you did want to turn it off that is how you're going to go ahead and do that so that's always good and you can actually turn off the steering responsive headlights apparently as well which is interesting i'm not sure why you would ever want to turn those off but that is an option as well and you can check out your radio information by the way and when it comes to the sound systems four speakers coming with the bass six speakers coming with the premium onyx and wilderness that we have today then if you were to go with the limited or touring trims you will get a 12 speaker harman kardon sound system with 576 watts that's going to be the crazy one but nonetheless we do have the six speaker sound system here in our wilderness so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. <music> Gotta be honest, guys. That six-speaker sound system may be one of the best six-speaker sound systems I've heard in quite a while. Clarity is 100% on point. Bass was decent. Not the very best, but bass was actually decent for a six-speaker sound system as well. And actually, a lot better than even some of the eight-speaker sound systems that I've heard recently. So... That's not bad for a six speaker sound system. I did want to say that. So if you're considering the wilderness, but then hesitant because of the sound system, that's not that bad. I gotta be honest, but 
Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Outback in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me first start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, so that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard, driver's knee airbag as well. In addition to that, a front passenger seat cushion airbag, those two you don't always get, so I wanna emphasize them. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also Subaru EyeSight coming standard on every single trim level. So that gives you adaptive cruise control with lane centering, pre-collision, braking, lane departure and sway warning, lane keep assist, and high beam assist as well. And then if you were to go with the limited trim level and up, that is going to add in addition to that, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist, and reverse automatic braking then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Outback, if you love to off-road, the wilderness trim is really where it's at when it comes to ground clearance, when it comes to those all-terrain tires and everything else. When you put it all together, that is a pretty darn cool feature because I know a lot of people modify the Outback to make it what the wilderness trim now is. So that is pretty darn cool if you ask me. Love the tablet style infotainment screen front and center, 11.6 inches. That is quite large. So I absolutely love that as well. Again, great ground clearance. You got the best all-wheel drive system in existence that has been proven over and over again. So if you live in a cold climate, especially like I do here in Pennsylvania, we get a ton of snow. This thing is going to trek through it with absolutely no issues whatsoever. As far as room for improvement goes, really the only thing I can think of is typically I'll say the CVT, but the CVT isn't that bad. So I can't really say that in the Outback, to be quite honest. It does simulate an automatic quite well. Digital gauges, maybe. I, I'll say that the digital gauge clusters that are coming out today are completely customizable. You can change the colors, you can change the look. Wouldn't mind seeing that in the Outback, but really that's about it. This one is finished great on the interior quality. Everything else is actually pretty darn good. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Outback in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on TikTok at the bottom of the screen there if you wanted to see short clips of these vehicles before they actually get to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're any new car reviews that is what we've been doing here for over six years now do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold